Hi everyone. In this short little video, I just want to go ahead and show you how you can use uh, this consumer price index to go ahead and calculate the inflation rate. Now remember, a lot of people want to interpret the consumer price index as a measure of the cost of living, and therefore the inflation rate based upon the consumer price index would be a measure of what's happening to the cost of living over time. And for right now, I'm going to go ahead and with that interpretation, but in one of the later videos, I'm going to talk about some of the problems with using the consumer price index for doing that. But for right now, let's just take things at face value. In the United States, the base year for, it's actually a base period for the consumer price index is 1982 to 1984. So that, uh, the consumer price index has a value of 100 averaged over that time period. And in 2011 here, we see a consumer price index of 224.9. What that means is the price of the fixed basket of goods that American buys over time has increased by 124.9%. And in 2012, the consumer price index is 229.6, which means the cost of the fixed basket of goods is 129, 129.6% higher than it was back in the base year. But the question we want to ask here is, what's happened to the cost of this fixed basket of goods over t between 2011 and 2012? In other words, if we're thinking of the inflation rate as a price level or a measure of average prices of goods and services, then we're looking to calculate the inflation rate between 2012 and 2000, or between 2011 and 2012. So going back to one of our earlier formulas, we can say that the inflation rate in 2012 is just going to be a measure of the ending price level. And here, since our price level is the CPI, I'm going to go ahead and just write CPI rather than P for price level, divided by the beginning price level, which is CPI in 2011, times 100, oh, excuse me, not that simple, minus 1, times 100. And the reason why we multiply by 100 is really just convention. It's to turn an inflation rate of 1% from 0 0.01, a decimal, into just 1, a whole number. Or an inflation rate of 10% from 0 0.1 to 10. Or an inflation rate of 5% from 0 0.0, a decimal of 0 0.05 to a whole number of 5. It's just people thinking whole numbers much more easily than they do decimals, so oftentimes it's just convenient to multiply by 100. All right, well this is just one equation with uh, three unknowns. If you plug in any two of the unknowns, you should be all to solve for the third. Here I'm asking you to do the relatively simple thing of plugging in the values of the CPI and calculating the inflation rate based upon that. Well, in 2012, the consumer price index is 229.6. In 2011, the consumer price index is 224.9. Subtract off 1, multiply by 100, and if you do that, you will get a, an inflation rate of 2.1%. Meaning, the consumer price index, or the price of the typical basket of goods that households bought in the United States increased by 2.1 percent between 2011 and 2012. Now, as I said, some people are going to say, well, we want to say the cost of living has gone up by 2.1 percent. Turns out for some technical reasons you can't do that. The inflation rate based upon the consumer price index tends to overstate the uh, increase in the cost of living for a variety of reasons. We'll talk about some of those in the next video. So we'll leave that for the next video on this one. If you can calculate an inflation rate based upon uh, the consumer price index, you're in great shape. The key thing to remember is here we're calculating the inflation rate based upon the consumer price index, but there's lots of other different measures of average prices out there, such as the GDP deflator, the um, chain type price index for GDP, the personal consumption expenditure, the producer price index, so there's a whole host of other different measures of the price level, and you would calculate the inflation rate exactly the same, th same way. You would just be plugging in different values here. All right, well, thank you very much, and uh, in the next video, we'll talk about limitations to the consumer price index.